This culture, stretching back to 10,000 BCE, in and around the same time that Gobekli Tepe shows up on the radar. This Pulaskian culture, as it's called by Homer, has arguably the oldest religion in the world. This religion would be the main influence for both the Sumerian and Mediterranean world, as well as later Indian culture, the Hindus and the Vedics. Do we have anything to show for? The answer is no. However, this Pelasgian creation myth has been reconstructed by Robert Graves in the 20th century. And here's how he did it. If you've seen my last video on the older version of Genesis that predates the Bible, that's a theogony written by Philo of Byblos in the first century who cites a Bronze Age priest named Sanko Niathan from the region of the Phoenicians. With that theogony side by side with the Orphic theogony and the theogony of Hesiod, as well as Sumerian tablets, Homer's, Iliad, geography by Pausanias, the Argonautica, and John Zetes, also using Pliny the Elder's history, Robert Graves was able to reconstruct the Pelasgian creation myth. And here is how it goes. The Pelasgian creation myth, the oldest creation myth in the world. In the beginning, Uranome, the goddess of all things, rose naked from chaos, but found nothing substantial for her feet to rest upon, and therefore divided the sea from the sky, dancing lonely upon its waves. She danced toward the south, and the wind set in motion behind her, seemed something new and apart, with which to begin a work of creation. Wheeling about, she caught hold of this north wind, rubbed it between her hands, and behold, the great serpent, Ophion. Uranome danced to warm herself wildly and more wildly until Ophion, grown lustful, coiled about those divine limbs and was moved to couple with her. Now the north wind, who is also called Boreas, fertilizes, which is why mares often turn their hindquarters to the wind and breed foals without aid of a stallion. So, Uranome was likewise got with child. Next, she assumed the form of a dove, brooding on the waters and the waves, and in due process of time laid the universal egg. At her bidding, Ophion coiled seven times about this egg until it hatched and split into two out tumbled all things that exist her children which were sun moon planets stars the earth with its mountains and rivers trees herbs and living creatures uranome and ophion made their home upon Mount Olympus, where he vexed her by claiming to be the author of the universe. Forthwith, she bruised his head with her heel, kicked out his teeth, and banished him to the dark caves below the earth. Next, the goddess created seven planetary powers, setting a titaness and a titan over each. Thea and Hyperion for the sun, Phoebe and Atlas for the moon, Dione and Creus for the planet Mars, Metis and Coeus for the planet Mercury, Themis and Euromedon for the planet Jupiter, Tethys and Oceanus for Venus, Rhea and Cronus 
for the planet Saturn. But the first man was Pelasgus, ancestor of the Pelasgians. He sprang from the soil of Arcadia, followed by certain others whom he thought to make huts and feed upon acorns and sew pigskins tunics such as poor folks still wear in Euboea and Phocis. That concludes the oldest creation myth ever. And in this archaic religious system, there were, as yet, neither gods nor priests, but only a universal goddess and her priestess, women, being the dominant sex, and man, her frightened victim. Fatherhood was not honored, conception being attributed to the wind, the eating of beans, or the accidental swallowing of an insect. Inheritance was the matrilineal, and snakes were regarded as incarnations of the dead. Uranome, which means wide wandering, was the goddess's title as the visible moon. She is also called Phanes by the Greeks in the Orphic Theogony. The Sumerian name for her was called Yahu, Exalted Dove, a title which later passed to Jehovah as the creator. It was a dove that Marduk symbolically sliced her into two at the Babylonian Spring Festival, known as Akitu, when he inaugurated the New World Order. This god Yahu, who was a goddess, became synchronized with Marduk, who was already synchronized from Dumuzi and a pre-Semitic god known as Zababa. And Zababa, who is represented by the full moon, would be the origin of the word Shabbat, which in Babylonian means full moon. And the Babylonians celebrated this Shabbat, every full moon, with rest. This god Sababa, who appears in Anatolia, as well as Sumer and other places, is the origin of the god Sabatios, worshipped on the island of Crete by the Minoans, and brought into the Phrygian religion as well, who was married to the mountain god Kababa, later known as Kybele, and Sabatios is identified by the Greeks as Dionysus or Bacchus, the underworld son of God, 